What's going on guys, this is Damien from The Lookout and welcome to our how to play Cumber Archetype Guide. Cumber is finally here, all of the cards have been spoiled and I know that a lot of you are fans of the character, so let's just dive into it and break down how to play Cumber. But before we begin, half of you aren't subscribed yet, so if you like these types of videos, Please hit that like and subscribe button, we are on our way to 3000 subs and we're trying to get there by the end of March. Now, roll the video! Card Market is Europe's largest platform for all TCGs. Always find the right cards by buying and selling them across Europe with other players and collectors. Be it singles, boosters, booster boxes or any other accessories, you name it. Card Market is the place to get them safely, securely and readily available. As with all of our videos, let's start with the breakdown. So in this video we'll be going over the archetype breakdown, we'll be discussing various cards within the archetype, I will show you some lines of play, then we will go into first four turns. We usually cover three, but this time we'll be covering the first four turns, and then we'll finish the video with a summary. Let's go! Before we dive into the archetype, we need to go over some keywords. Now, I understand that a solid portion of you understand these keywords, but every video is someone's first video, so for the people who are new to the game, this is what the keywords do. Servant gives a card plus 10k power, but it can't be switched to active mode during their owner's charge phase. This means that if you have a card with Servant in rest mode, at the start of your turn, it doesn't switch to active mode. Overlord, put a card with Servant that you own to the bottom of your deck. Very important. Then you get to draw a card. You can use this ability only as activate main, which means that you cannot use it mid-battle, as if it were activate battle. Which basically means that if your opponent attacks you with a card with Servant, you can't overlord it and just remove it from the attack. That's kind of mechanics prevention, for balancing purposes. And finally, the newest keyword, Z-Stack. Z-Stack X card Y. X is the number, card is the... Y is the name of the card. When you put a card with this skill into play, put the X amount of Y cards under this card. It sounds a bit confusing, but there is a card in this archetype that does that, and it will become much clearer once we reach it. What is Cumber all about? Well, it's a very unique black deck which benefits from you playing your battle cards on your opponent's side of the board. And then you give them Servant, and then you draw cards, and then you remove them, and you combo with them. There's a whole bunch of things that you can do. But basically, you're giving your opponent your cards, and then you're using them for some other abilities. That's it. You give them... Uh, you give them Servant, and then you use your Overlord battle cards to draw cards, you know, just to remove them, and then you draw. That's, it's a weird draw engine, it will become much more clear once we dive deeper into the video. And the theme of this deck is basically Saiyans versus Cumber. It's pretty cool, let's check Cumber out. Here is our leader, the evil Saiyan, basically Cumber. So, uh, you start the game, with a field card Prism Planet in play. That is his first auto. He's a black leader, 10k. His second auto is when you attack, you draw one. This is standard in Dragon Ball. All leaders do this. His awakening condition, however, is when your life is at 4 or less, this is standard for Dragon Ball, or when you have 2 energy and a full Z battle card in play, you get to draw one card, you get to switch one energy to active mode, which is awesome, I love switching energies to active mode, and then you draw from your lives until you have six lives left. On the awakened side, our leader is Cumber Maddening Force. This one is pretty good, so listen up. Auto, once per turn, when this card attacks, draw one card. This leads me to believe that there will be a card in the archetype that allows your leader to restand because otherwise it wouldn't have auto once per turn, that means that he can swing multiple times, but unfortunately that card doesn't exist yet. Activate main, once per turn, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and it gains servant until the end of your opponent's next turn. This is awesome, because you will be using this along with a different card to just remove cards from your opponent's side of the board. This is great. 
Like it doesn't look like much until you see what the full battle card does in combination with Prison Planet. However, if you thought that this is it, it's not it, we also have a Z leader. This is our Z leader, SS Cumber Battle Frenzy, and guys, I think that this one is actually pretty good. So, 2Z energy, 20k baseline. 20k baseline on Z leaders is phenomenal. Z awaken for one energy, that's an issue. Like, uh, Z awakens are usually good when they are free. When you need to pay an energy, it needs to be super strong. When you have three lives or less, so you cannot awaken while above three lives and black cumber, like this later. Auto. When this card attacks, draw one and choose one of your opponent's battle cards and it gains servant until the end of your opponent's next turn. So no, we no longer have the activate main, but we give servant on attack. Then the crazy, crazy ability. Activate battle once per turn. If this card is in battle, choose up to two of your opponent's battle cards with Servant and use them in combo in your combo area. Basically, activate battle, remove two of your opponent's cards and combo with them. Like, this is insane. Like, they, this is extremely powerful. You can become a 30k attacker. If you wish, you can uh, use this ability in defense because it's it's one per once per turn. If this leader is in battle, so if your opponent is attacking you and they have some servant cards on the field, activate battle. There you go, free combo fuel. Amazing, amazing Z leader. Here is a visual presentation of how this works. So you attack with Cumber. His auto triggers. You draw one and then you choose a card to give servant to. Let's say your opponent has these trunks out. You give him Servant. Then your opponent says no counters, the attack continues, and you say activate battle. You target the trunks, you remove him from the field, you put him into your combo area, you're comboing with him, and now your Cumber is a 25k attacker. Now that you know what the leader does, we need to go over the two key cards of the deck, that, the cards that make the deck work. First off, Full Z battle card, full assembling the strong. One cost, one Z energy, 4k. Deflect barrier, this is phenomenal protection. This basically means that this card will never get removed, it will never get prevented for entering play, and like the only color that can consistently remove it is green, but green is awful, so you're pretty safe. Overlord, limit to one, if your leader is Cumber. Okay, so if your leader is Cumber, once per turn, you can use Overlord. He also has the newest keyword, Z Stack 1, Black Cumber battle, battle card with an energy cost of 2. This means that when you play Fu from your Z deck, you also get to put one Cumber Z battle card with an energy cost of 2 under Fu. That's what Z Stack does. And finally, activate main for one black energy. Play up to one black cumber card with an energy cost of two from under this card. This is how you cheat in your Z battle card, your Z battle cumber. You basically pay one and you save yourself on the Z energy. And then only you get an attacker who gives things servant when he attacks. We will be going over this card eventually. Now we need to look at the other key component of the deck, Prison Planet. Prison Planet is the second key card of the deck. Uh, it's a field card and you always start the game with it in play. For those of you new to the game, a field card is like permanent cards slash locations in Hearthstone or enchantment cards in Magic. They just sit there and they have an effect. And that's it. They can't attack, they can't be attacked, and 99% of the time they can't even be removed. This one even has barrier, making removal even more difficult. Permanent, mono black sand cards with a combo cost of 1 and 5k combo in your hand and battle area have their combo cost reduced by 1. Not super important, only affects a couple of cards in the deck, but it's good to have it. What's more important is the second permanent. When using your Fu's Overlord to choose a servant card, you can also choose cards in your opponent's battle area. So, here's how it works. 
you give your opponent's battle card servant, either through your leader's activate main or through some other cumber cards. Then uh, you use your fool's overlord ability to target these cards, place them at the bottom of the deck and draw one. This is a very, very cool draw engine slash removal slash control tool. We, we've never had anything similar in the game and it's pretty consistent because you can just keep giving cards servant. So worst case, you will always be drawing two cards per turn, which is pretty amazing. First card of the deck that we'll be talking about is Vegito and Vegito is the bait. So if you're looking to play Cumber and you're looking for Cumber's cards, you will find this Vegito. Vegito is, you know, like the big fusion. He's supposed to be like this super powerful card that closes games, that allows you to close games more specifically, but it's not. It's pure bait. Don't play it. Just, this is an awful card. So, 5 cost, 25k, barrier, biggest issue here, blocker, second almost equally big issue, Union Potara for free. That means that you need to have a Goku and Vegeta in play to play Vegito. You stack them on top of each other and then you play Vegito. Choose one of your opponent's battle cards, send it to its owner's warp, that's good as removal, draw one and then fusion pieces on Goku and Vegeta. Permanent. This card is played from your hand in your opponent's battle area immediately. Every time you play it, it goes to your opponent. And when you're choosing cards to use with this card's union skill from hand, you can choose battle cards you own in your opponent's battle area. This basically means that you can give your opponent to Vegeta and Goku through various abilities and then just use them on your opponent's side of the field to play Vegito. However, here is where this trash truly shines as the glorious turret that it is. If your life is at four or more, and your opponent's black, uh, and your opponent's leader is black cumber. Keep in mind, this is on your opponent's side of the field. Your opponent is the one that needs to be on four or more lives, and you are the opponent in this text. Meaning that if you're playing cumber and your opponent is four or more lives, when this card is played. For the turn, if your opponent's Evil Saiyan or Cumber card, both black and with an energy cost of 8, very specific, is attacking and in battle you can't activate counter skills. Sounds cool until you take into consideration that it has barrier, there are no cards that can give it servant so that you can just remove it, just ignoring barrier. It's a blocker so it's always going to be jumping in front of the attack. It doesn't need to counter it. It can jump in front of it. Yes, you can attack with dual attackers, but then you're just wasting a single attack on this guy, and your opponent can combo out of it. So, yeah. Uh, but the important thing is this clause. If your life is at four or more, this card only works if your opponent has four or more lives, which you might not think is a big deal. However, you need to take one big thing into consideration. Your boss monster can only be played on turn four onwards. So at any point between turns one to four, if you play this Wijito, it does literally nothing. If your opponent at any point falls to three lives, this Wijito does nothing. Like, this card is pure bait. Just ignore it, pretend that it doesn't exist, and then just build a deck without it. Trust me, it's much better without it. Let's check out our Saiyans. We have Trunks, Vegeta, and Goku. Let's start off with Trunks. Trunks is the backbone of the deck. Trust me, Trunks is the unsung hero of the deck. Free cost, 10k. Free cost doesn't matter. Auto, when this card is played, draw one and discard one from hand. You will always be playing this on your opponent's side of the field. So, when he enters your opponent's side of the field, they draw one and discard one. Activate main, limit one. If your leader is Cumber. 
Play this card from your hand in your opponent's battle area. They draw one, they discard one. Then look at up to five cards from the top of your deck. Add up to one my future, we are not playing this card. Or Saiyan card, both black. Not, and not a copy of this card. And with an energy cost of six or less among them. And add it to your hand. And then you shuffle your deck. Any Saiyan card. Any. That's the big thing. Any Saiyan card that is black and costs six or less. The list of targets is huge. Any black Saiyan card. So here's a list of them. Here are some of the targets that you can get with this effect. You can get this is for Vegeta, which is a phenomenal card. You can get Brainwash No More if you really need to survive a turn. You can get Thwarting the Dark Empire, one of the best black cards in the game. You can get SS Bardock. You can get the newest Gohan Rare. You can get Dark Broly, one of the best overrealms in the game at the moment. Hell, you can even get your super combo with Trunks. Trunks is amazing. I'm not saying that you'll be playing all of these in your deck, but these are just some possible targets and all of them are phenomenal. And these targets don't even include everything else in the archetype that you can get, because these trunks can get anything except your boss monster. It can get anything in the archetype. The card is phenomenal. Now let's talk about Goku. We won't be going over Vegeta. Vegeta is just a free counterplay, negate the attack, and then it's a blocker who goes into our opponent's side of the field. It's pretty simple. So let's talk about Goku instead. Goku is he's a semi super combo, but when when you first look at it, it's not super obvious what you're doing with him because he has a bit of conflicting text here. But here's how he actually works: free cost 10k, free cost doesn't matter again. Double strike 5k combo power, permanent. While your leader is black, this card gets plus 5k and servant. So. If you play this on your side of the field, he is a 25k double strike attacker. Auto limit 1. If a player's leader is black, well, your is always gonna be. When this card is used in a combo, choose up to one of your cards and it gets plus 10k combo power for the battle and play this card from your combo area in your opponent's battle area. And then activate main limit 1 pay one black energy if you have three or more played from your hand. Now, you might hear somewhere that, um, you know, this is a one cost 25k double strike. It's an amazing card. It's super aggressive. But the reason I'm telling you, the reason why we're actually looking at this card is the combo thing. It's the combo thing, trust me. Because when you combo with him, he gives plus 15k combo power because he is baseline 5 plus 10 and then he enters your opponent's side of the field you give him servant you overlord him opponent just lo flat out loses him and then you get to draw a card here is how it works this is what it looks like in action so you attack with cumber you draw a card you combo with goku goku's auto triggers giving your cumber plus 15k Cumber is now 30k attacker, the attack resolves. Okay, Goku enters your opponent's side of the board. Now he's in your opponent's battle area. You use your Cumber's activate main. You give Goku servant. And then, because of the prison planet, you can activate Fu's overlord targeting the Goku. You bottom deck the Goku and you draw one. This is literally a semi-super combo. You, but instead of drawing 2, you draw 1, but instead of getting plus 10k, you get plus 15. The card is amazing. I think that it's much better this way than as like 25k double striker for 1 energy. Screw that. Like this, much better. Before we go into how to play this deck, let's just address the rest of the cards. Uh, there is a unison for all according to plan. It's a pretty cute card, you can play it for 1 energy, uh, plus 2 activate main, it gives your cumbers plus 10k and servant, I mean servant, which basically gives them plus 10k, 
and then they become your overlord targets and you also have the boss monster which has no protection at all but it can give everything servant when you play it and then it either gets dual dual attack double strike or triple strike you can only play him on turns four onward so from four plus so five six and whatever wherever you go and your opponents your opponent needs to have two cards in play minimum two it's not the best it's really not the best but if it manages to go through it's a pretty powerful swing okay let's dive into the deck wait deck list yeah this time we don't have a deck list for you we usually have them in these videos this time around we are waiting for promo cards to finish because last time uh, with bt19 we saw that every every archetype got one okay slash decent slash super important card in the promo packs so instead of just giving you semi-functional deck list that might change later on we will be showing you a deck list once all of the cards are out if you want to check out a prototype build link is in the description below starting off with the mulligan what are we looking for well we can mulligan for trunks because getting trunks on turn one is amazing if you don't have trunks there is also a mini cumber a baby cumber cumber junior it costs uh, one energy similar effect to trunks but i think the trunks is still much better we are looking for goku because goku can allow us some big swings it's also great to get cumber or depending on whether you're going first or second you can also instead of cumber be going for the full unison depending on your build but my biggest focus here is getting trunks because trunks allows us to dig for a whole bunch of cards and getting goku for those powerful swings though those are my mulligan preferences and then if you hit a cumber or a unison that's amazing because that just adds to consistency going forward this time we will be going over turns one to four we usually just cover one to three or maybe the first two turns this time we're covering the first four because i want to show you how you close the game so that's why we'll go we're going to four because we literally cannot cheat out our boss monster earlier it's time to go over the first few turns the first turn and the first half of turn two are pretty much always the same but from that point on we have some more flexibility which is why we'll be showing you some options um, the first half of turn two depends heavily i mean the second half of turn two depends heavily on whether you went first or second uh, which is why we will be showing you an alternative play if you went second we'll be showing you a more aggressive play style so turn two we'll, we're just smashing into our opponent turn two we're assuming that you're going first although it is much better in my opinion it's much better to go second with this deck than to go first but we'll be assuming that you're going first and that you have kept the mulligan that we have shown you turn one turn one is always the same let's just quickly go over it here's an example of turn one so we start we get our prison planet in we charge an energy we use trunks as activate main to search top five and to give trunks to our opponent we grab a cumber we grab anything i just put cumber here you know as a placeholder we grab anything that we need we shuffle the deck trunks enters on our opponent's side of the field his auto triggers our opponent draws one and discards one and then we must end the turn that's the issue that's why i wanted to show you turn one going first because we just end the turn on one energy we haven't done anything we we don't have anything to play the only card that we can play is if we get the cumber junior that costs one but that's it however on our opponent turns on our opponent's turn we need to combo with one card and charge it into the z energy we must always always enter turn two with one z energy and our opponent will be attacking us most of the time because that's how he draws that's how our opponent always draws thanks to the leader's effects 
and yeah we just combo one and get that one into the z energy turn two it's time to go aggro we start turn two we charge an energy then we pay one energy and one z energy to play full now it is time to awaken of course because we played full we get our cumber z battle card under full we awaken drawing one and reading one energy then we attack we draw one that's our leader's auto opponent says no counters fine and then we combo with goku we get plus 15k power and now our attack is a 30k attack goku enters play on our opponent's side then we pay one and we play our z battle card cumber which gives goku servant we play this card from underneath our Fu using his activate main. Then we use Fu's overlord, targeting the Goku, putting him at the bottom of our deck and drawing one. We have one energy left, so we pay that one energy to play our unison. We use unison's activate main to give our Cumber Servant. Servant gives Cumber plus 10k and then he swings for 25k and we end the turn. Now there is an alternative. Turn 2 is actually amazing if you went second. I'm going to show you the alternative. Just keep in mind that the first slide, the first portion of turn 2 is pretty much the same. The difference happens in the second portion of turn 2. This time around, when Goku enters our opponent's side of the field, we pay 1 to play Cumber, we give Goku Servant, and then we pay one to play our six drop cumber because six drop cumber requires that our opponent has two energy we cannot do this if we went first but if we went second we can do this play then fu uses overlord targets goku we draw one cumber at our six drop cumber attacks he's a dual attacker he restands he attacks again and then we attack with our z battle card and then we end the turn Turn 3! On turn 3 we're playing pretty much the same as on turn 2, we're just applying pressure, but between turns 3 and 4 we are defending like mad, we're just focusing on surviving until turn 4. Vegeta helps out a lot, and another defensive option, of course, is our Z leader. Before we continue, we must address the Z awakening. When should you Z awaken? Well, the Z leader is an insanely strong defensive tool because his 20k baseline plus if your opponent has any servants he can become a really really big big leader in the combo step so he is quite defensive but unfortunately you need to be on a very low number of lives to play him in our example we will assume that you have dropped to three lives between turns three and four and that you will be Z awakening but usually this might not always be the case you should not usually be looking to drop to free lives on purpose as fast as possible so that you can Z awaken I mean the Z leader is much much stronger infinitely stronger than the normal awakened version but dropping yourselves yourself to free lives as fast as possible so that you can see awaken might not be the best decision finally turn four this is our earliest boss monster kill turn let's go we started the turn we charge one energy we can for example use our trunks as activate main to give him to our opponent so that we can have a servant on the board search top five we can grab what we're missing let's say that we're missing the goku then we pay one to play Cumber, we give Trunks Servant, we attack with Cumber, we, he restands, we attack again because he's a dual attacker. In the second attack we can for example use Goku in, in the combo, so he gets plus 15k and we give Goku to our opponent. Now we have two cards on our opponent's side of the field, we get to pay to play our Cumber, give Servant to everything and let's say that in this case we take triple strike in this hypothetical scenario we take triple strike then we can attack with our leader our opponent has like no counters we can use activate battle we can combo with these two cards or any other two cards that might pose a problem to our winning strategy with additional 10k combo power 
our leader is now a 30k attacker, the attack resolves, and then we just swing with our boss monster. If our opponent has no counters, we just flat out dump our hand in combo and we win the game. An important thing to note, turn 4 is not an accurate scenario, but is an example of a possible one. So what I have shown you isn't always going to be your turn 4. Sequencing is important. Use Overlord and the Z-Leader's ability to get rid of problematic cards on your opponent's side of the board, but also keep in mind that you need some cards, at least two cards, on your opponent's side of the board to play your boss monster, so sequence this properly. And finally, between Triple Strike or Dual Attack. Well, Triple Strike or Dual Attack Double Strike on the boss monster is a situational question. You know, it's really situational, and yeah, of course, both of them are good. Sometimes Triple Strike is better, sometimes Dual Attack Double Strike is better. I really cannot give you an objective answer to this one, it all depends on what the game is looking like. Before we end the video, let's dive into the summary. The deck seems fun, it seems really fun, but it could be stronger. It's really not the strongest deck, it's not even the strongest black deck in my opinion, it's lacking a lot. I think that it's lacking a lot, but it is fun. Your boss monster has no protection and you can play it before turn 4, which is not the best. That's the issue that I'm having. Um, to have 4 energy, I mean not 4 energy, to be on 4 energy and your opponent needs to have 2 battle cards, that's not an issue, but 4 energy. You're paying 2 to play your boss monster, surviving until turn 4 in black in the current super aggro meta is asking a lot especially when the boss monster has no protection at all. That's really asking a lot. Servant can function also as a defensive tool for shutting down your opponent's attackers. What I mean by this is that let's say your opponent has an attacker, let's say it's uh, Omega Shenron, Triple Striker. He attacks, you survive, and then this card is in rest mode. It has no barrier, so on your next turn you can just give it Servant and then it won't be able to re-stand on your opponent's, on your opponent's charge step. So that's a, way for disable, that's a way to disable your opponent's attackers. Unfortunately, they need to attack first, so yeah. Uh, don't play the Vegito. Vegito, it's a trap. It's a trap, guys. Vegito is pure garbage. Don't, just, just don't play it. Just trust me, don't play it. It can theoretically function if you have the Secret Rare or you have the Black Smoke Dragon. Both of these cards can just remove it, but otherwise it's a trap. Trust me, don't play it. And finally, this isn't the best black deck, but it is a good rogue option. Uh, it's worth giving this deck a try. I think that if you want to have fun at locals, at locals levels, this is a good deck. However, as I've said before I have um, went into turns in the decklist slide, we will most likely be getting a promo card for this deck. And that promo card can change a lot of things. If it's super strong, it will change a lot of things. So yeah, that's it. That's it for the video. Let me know in the comments below. Are you excited to try out Cumber? I'll probably be giving it a try. Like, I, I like the mechanic, I really like the mechanic, but I don't think it's gonna be the best one, but let me know if you're a Cumber fan, are you satisfied with this deck? Are you excited to play Cumber? If you're a black player, what do you think? Is this going to be a rogue option, or is this, you know, a step in the right direction that black needs? I, I don't think that this is going to be the meta black deck, but anything is possible. So, yeah, let me know in the comments. And while you're still here, hit that like and subscribe button and please help us get to 3000 subs by the end of March. This has been Damien from The Lookout and I'll see all of you in the next video.